I'm sorry. <laughs> Was this book written for me? Because it sure sounds like it. Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to take you through my March TBR. March is my birthday month, so I'm very excited. I have a lot of people coming to stay. I've got a friend coming to stay and I've got some family coming to stay as well from like the middle to the end of March. So I'm not confident about how much reading is going to get done this month and my TBR may be a bit ambitious because of that. I have got a lot of different genres, I've got a lot of YA which is quite unusual these days but I've been slowly getting back into YA ever since Once Upon a Broken Heart took over my life. I think maybe like half of the books? Maybe half, maybe just under half. A big chunk of it is YA and I've also picked a few books that are already on my shelves so that I'm trying to get through a few books that have been sitting and sitting and sitting for a while. So let's get into it. I've got two books that I'm definitely definitely 100% reading in March. The first one being Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. This has been recommended to me by my friend on numerous occasions and also Bailey in my comments mentioned that they were thinking about starting it and it really put me in the mood and so I picked it for my sister and I's book club pick this month. From my understanding this book is a kind of dark comedy thriller about a woman who is a photographer who takes explicit photos of normal men that she picks up on the streets of Newcastle. When she is offered an exhibition at a renowned London gallery, this kind of sets her off on a path of self-destruction that centres around her relationship with her obsessive best friend and the shy young man that has attracted her attention at her local supermarket. Apparently this is really dark, funny and shocking and explores kind of taboo topics within the realm of sexuality and gender. I think this was her day debut book. She's also come out with another book that I really want to read called Penance. I just think that I've put off reading this long enough. I think she sounds like an amazing writer who writes about really interesting topics in fresh ways. I really like books that tackle some more taboo topics. I feel like I get so engrossed and can't stop reading and I'm just so intrigued by the subject matter of this book. I can't wait. And then the next book that I'm definitely going to read I've chosen because I have joined a reading challenge on Storygraph that is the Storygraph Reads Around the World 2024 challenge. So basically you have the year to read 10 books each from a different country that has been listed out in this challenge. So the countries for this year are Chile, Germany, Ghana, Indonesia, Jamaica, Lebanon, Poland, Sri Lanka, Sudan and Venezuela. One of my goals, I mean this year and also just like generally for the future, is making sure that I'm reading more books from authors from different cultures, countries, backgrounds, religions from me and I think this challenge is going to be a really good way of getting me into that habit more. So I'm going to do Chile this month and I've chosen to read my Tender Matador by Pedro Lamebel, translated by Catherine Silver. I'm going to read out what the description of this says on Storygraph because I'm going in quite blind to this. It is spring 1986 in the city of Santiago and Augusto Pinochet is losing his grip on power. In one of the city's many poor neighbourhoods works the Queen of the Corner, a hopeless and lonely romantic who embroiders linens for the wealthy and listens to boleros to drown out the gunshots and rioting in the streets. Along comes Carlos, a young handsome man who befriends the ageing homosexual and uses his house to store mysterious boxes and hold clandestine meetings. My Tender Matador is an extraordinary novel of revolution and forbidden love and a stirring portrait of Chile at an historical crossroads. I did some research into some more well-known works by Chilean authors set in Chile and I was intrigued by a lot of them but none as much as I was intrigued by this summary. My history of Chile is limited. <laughs> really limited. Like I am very much ignorant to this political turmoil and what was going on in Chile in the 1980s. So one, I think I'm going to learn a lot which is great and is one of the big goals of this challenge. Two, the characters and the relationship that this seems to be setting up sounds so interesting. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of 
interesting conflict created by these two characters sharing a space with like the complex political background coming to the surface and kind of invading this guy's home maybe that's what i'm getting from it and i'm just so excited to read something that i have never heard of that is set in a piece of history that i know nothing about i think this is going to be great. The next book that I'm planning on reading is one I am really excited for. I think I might read Shatter Me by Tahera Mafi. I've never read this series before. It was big, big on booktube when I was a teenager. Like, I remember all the big booktubers at that time reading it but I never read it I never got into it I don't know why and now obviously with this big book talk boom this book series has come back onto like my social media recommendations I think I need to take notice of it this time around so similarly to my Ali Hazelwood video that came out last week I think I'm gonna do a video on me reading the Shatter Me series for the first time and I think I'm gonna read the first one in March and I am really excited for it because I know nothing about this series really. The description on Storygraph for this reads, one touch is all it takes, one touch and Juliet Ferrars can leave a fully grown man gasping for air, one touch and she can kill. No one knows why Juliet has such incredible power, it feels like a curse, a burden that one person alone could never bear, but the re-establishment sees it as a gift, sees her as an opportunity, an opportunity for a deadly weapon. Juliet has never fought for herself before, but when she's reunited with the one person who ever cared about her, she finds a strength she never knew she had. So it sounds like a pretty straightforward YA dystopian, maybe fantasy setting. But if what I know about this series is correct, whoever she is romantically involved in, because it does say there's a hint of romance and magic, and I'm assuming that this is the only person who ever cared about her that's mentioned at the end of that description. If my understanding is correct about this book, and please don't correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I want to go into this series like and get some whiplash from all the the shocks that I am about to encounter, hopefully. I don't think she ends up with the person that you would think she ends up with in the first book. There is an enemies to lovers romance that starts like maybe halfway through the series or something. And that's pretty much the only reason I want to read the series because I see BookTok girlies going feral over this relationship and I want to be part of it. I want to know what the hype is. I hope that I have not misinterpreted what I'm getting into and I'm going to be disappointed. That I truly think that is what the vibe is and if so I am in. So yeah I, I'm going to start this journey in March I think and see where it takes me. The next book is one that's been sitting on my shelf for a pretty much a year I think because I got it for my birthday last year and that is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I don't think I've read any other Murakami books. I think this will be my first one and I think this is his most well known. On Storygraph it says it propelled him to the forefront of the literary scene. So this book is about Toru, a serious young college student in Tokyo who is devoted to Naoko, a beautiful and introspective young woman but their mutual passion is marked by the tragic death of their best friend years before. As Naoko retreats further into her own world, Toru finds himself drawn to a fiercely independent and sexually liberated young woman. A magnificent coming of age story steeped in nostalgia, Norwegian wood blends the music, the mood and the ethos that were the 60s with a young man's hopeless and heroic first love. This is translated by Jay Rubin. I do love a coming of age story and I am excited to finally read a Murakami. The other book that I've heard of by him is Kafka on the Shore. That's the other really well known one but he's written a ton of books. I'm expecting the language in this to be just really really beautiful literary prose, like quite lyrical but also very honest and stripped back. That is what I'm expecting from it. I have no idea but I have high hopes for this one. The next book I want to read is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This is another thriller which follows Alex who has all but given up on her dreams of becoming a published author until she is offered the once in a lifetime opportunity of attending a writing retreat at the estate of feminist horror author 
Rosa Vallo. When she arrives at this retreat, Rosa tells her and all the attendees that they must write a novel within one month and whoever writes the best novel will be offered a seven-figure publishing deal. Alex is obviously determined to win this so she starts writing and is kind of ignoring the erratic behaviour of Rosa, the mind games that her rival, who is also in attendance, is playing with her, as well as the alleged haunting of the mansion itself. But when one of the attendees goes missing in a snowstorm, Alex begins to think that there's something a bit more sinister afoot. I have been loving a thriller recently and this one has been on my TBR for a few months. And because it's set in a kind of snowy place, I wanted to read it before it got into spring summer time. So I really do want to get to this book in March. I haven't heard much about it. I think I saw it recommended by someone on booktube. I think it was maybe Meg. I'm just hoping it's really fast paced, dark and twisty and gripping. I think the fact that there is like a, a countdown in the book of having only one month to write a full novel is going to make the tensions quite high. The next book I want to read is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. This is the first book in a series. I don't know if the rest of the series is out. Let me check. The second book comes out at the end of this year. When did this book come out? This book only came out at the end of October. Okay. I thought it had been out longer than that. First of all, I love the cover of this book. Second of all, I loved Egypt in primary school. It was one of my favourite topics that we studied. I love The Mummy starring Brendan Gleeson and Rachel Weisz. It's one of those films where when it's on, which it always seems to be on on ITV, I don't want to turn it off. And so because this has been described as The Mummy meets death on the Nile in this lush immersive historical fantasy set in Egypt filled with adventure, arrivals to lovers romance, and a dangerous race. I'm sorry. <laughs> Was this book written for me? Because it sure sounds like it. This is another young adult it's about a girl called Inez Oliveira who belongs to the upper society of 19th century Buenos Aires and has everything that she could ever want for except present parents because her parents are globetrotters who are always kind of leaving her behind. When Inez's parents die tragically she inherits their massive fortune and a guardian who is an archaeologist in partnership with his Egyptian brother-in-law. Inez wanting to know more about her parents deaths heads off to Cairo with a golden ring that was sent to her by her father before he died and when she gets there she is pulled into this world of old magic that that is tethered to the ring that she has and discovers that there's more to her parents' death than meets the eye. Meanwhile, her guardian's infuriatingly handsome assistant is trying to thwart her at every turn whilst Inez is using this ancient magic to try and find out what happened to her parents or risk becoming a pawn in a larger game that will kill her. This sounds so fun. I'm so excited for the setting in Egypt with all this ancient magic going about. I'm excited for this like rivals to lovers relationship. I just think this sounds like it could be a really, really good time and hopefully a new series that I'm really into. The next book I'm going to read is God Killer by Hannah Kainer, which I bought earlier in February when I went to, through to Bath. Everyone loves this book. So I'm excited to get into it. And also the second book has literally just come out, I think. So another series that hopefully I'm going to get into. This book is set in a world where there are countless gods wandering about. But after a great war, the new king of Midrin exiled these gods and pays god killers to destroy any who try to rise up. Our main character, Kissin, is one of these god killers whose parents were killed by a fire god as a child she hates gods. However, when Kissin is charged with helping a young noble girl whose soul is tied to a god of white lies, Kissin is faced with the problem of not being able to kill this god without ending the girl's life too. Kissin agrees to set out on a quest with this girl and god and a disillusioned knight to head to the ruined city of Blenraden to seek aid from the last wild gods. But the city of gods is no place for a god killer. It sounds like it's going to be a very adventurous 
fantasy. I love the cover of this book so much. I like the premise of this girl having a real reason to hate these gods but being forced into a situation where she has to work with them. I think that's going to be a really interesting conflict set up. And yeah, I think this is going to be super action-packed and fun. The next book I'm going to read is Curse Bread by Sophie McIntosh. This has again been on my bookshelf for quite a few months now. I actually got this when I was subscribed to a local book club when I lived in Cornwall. A book club that I actually never met any of the other people in because I was too shy and scared to go to any of the monthly meetups. So I just got the books delivered and then each month was too scared to go and actually talk about them. <laughs> but I never read this one and this one came up on what's it called the BBC Two book club behind the covers which I got really into in November and when it was on that show I was like hang on that's on my bookshelves and that sounds really good. This is from the Booker Prize nominated author of The Water Cure which I've never heard of and this is a chilling new feminist fable based on the true story of an unsolved mystery. What I immediately love about this book is how short it is. It's 184 pages. I love short books. I love books that like I can just get through super fast because I know that they're going to be really fast paced. Do you know what I mean? Or they, or hopefully they will be anyway. I'll read out the, the inside blurb for you, okay? Elodie is the baker's wife, a plain unremarkable person largely ignored by her husband. She burns with the secret desire to be extraordinary. One day, a charismatic new couple appears in town, the ambassador and his sharp-toothed wife, Violet, and Elodie quickly falls under their spell. All summer long, she stalks them through the shining streets, inviting herself into their home, trying to decipher their coded conversations, longing to possess them at any cost. Meanwhile, beneath the tranquil surface of daily life, strange things are happening. Six horses are found dead in a sun-drenched field, laid out neatly on the ground like an offering. Widows see their lost husbands walking up the river in the night, coming back to claim them. A teenage boy throws himself into the bonfire at the midsummer feast. A dark intoxication is spreading through the town, and when Elodie finally understands her role in it, it will be too late to stop. Does that not sound so good. The plot sounds nothing like it but it's kind of giving me the vibes of Rouge by Mona Awad which was like <sighs> nearly my favourite book of last year. I loved it so much. Fable of Obsession and Transformation which is exactly what Rouge is. So I am immediately drawn into this. I like that it's set in a small town as well. I love thrillers that are set in small towns. I don't know if this is a thriller necessarily but it's, it's sounding kind of definitely thrilling. This is only 184 pages long and yet this blurb sounds like everything is happening so I think that it is going to be really engrossing and page turning and yeah I can't wait to get into this. Sensuous and Haunted like Madame Bovary reworked as a ghost story. That's Joe Hamia is saying. It just sounds flipping fantastic. Getting to the end now there is two more books that I want to read. They're both going to be new releases in March actually. The next book I want to read is The No Girlfriend Rule by Kristen Randall which is a young adult LGBTQIA plus romance which sounds so good. I hadn't heard of it before today when I was looking up new releases because I was like maybe there's some new releases I want to read in March and honestly I am so glad that I found this. This is Julie Murphy meets Casey McQuiston in this unforgettable queer romance about a teen girl whose foray into fantasy tabletop role-playing brings her new confidence, true friends and a shot at real swoon-worthy love. So the set of this book is that Hollis Beckwith is starting her senior year with her boyfriend Chris. Their relationship isn't that exciting but it's comfortable and familiar and Hollis has anxiety so she wants to make sure that this relationship continues on past senior year. So she wants to learn Chris's favourite tabletop role-playing game called Secrets and Sorceries in order to prove that she's a girlfriend worth keeping around. <laughs> However, Chris has a no girlfriends at the table rule already hate Chris. So Hollis has to find her own group to learn and play with. She finds a group of six girls to play with and she becomes fast friends with them and she starts to gain confidence through 
playing as this character and starts using her character as armor kind of but when her character in the game starts flirting with the bard in their party this flirting starts developing something a bit deeper and hollis begins to question what she actually wants if she's content to just play or if this is something real this sounds fantastic i love D, &D. i love tabletop role-playing games i haven't played a lot but me and my husband love watching dimension 20 and critical role we're currently watching the new season of fantasy high and are loving it so much so this is going to be so flipping good i already know i'm gonna love it when does this come out 5th of march oh right at the beginning i just yeah i am so excited for this book i'm so glad that i have found out about it because i think i'm going to be obsessed i love the kind of concept of a relationship forming within the game and questioning whether the relationship is actually happening in real life too or like i think that's such a interesting thing to explore in a book figuring out like where the boundaries lie in role playing games and how to read someone and whether you're reading them as the character they're playing or if their feelings are actually seeping into the game. I think it's just going to be so good. I love the idea of this girl just kind of like becoming independent and more confident and figuring out what she actually wants rather than just trying to be something for her boyfriend. I think this is just going to be so great. I'm so excited. The other book coming out this month that I want to read is Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida Abike Iemide. This is another young adult book but this is a mystery and I was drawn into this book by the cover initially and then I read the synopsis and I was like yes please. So this book is about Sadie Hussein who is starting her third year of high school, this time at the prestigious Alfred Noble Academy boarding school. After being homeschooled all her life and feeling like a magnet for misfortune, she's not sure what will happen. What she doesn't expect though is for her roommate Elizabeth to disappear after Sadie's first night or for people to think she had something to do with it. With rumours swirling around her, Sadie catches the attention of the most popular girls in school, collectively known as the unholy trinity. I love that. <laughs> and they bring her into their fold. Between learning more about them, especially Persephone, who are these girls who have names like Persephone? Who Sadie finds herself drawn to, playing catch up in class and trying to figure out what happened to Elizabeth. Sadie has a lot on her plate. It doesn't help that she's already dealing with grief from the many tragedies in her family. And then a student is found dead. The more Sadie investigates, the more she realises there's more to Alfred Noble Academy and its students than she realised. Secrets lurk around every corner and beneath every surface. Secrets that rival even her own. This sounds so good. <laughs> I think I'm entering back into my YA era. I just think this is going to be really fast paced, intriguing. I love a boarding school. I love a mystery set at a boarding school. I love dark boarding schools. I love the fact that there is a kind of mean girls, unholy trinity. Whoever came up with that name in that group is a genius. And look at that cover. That's a good cover. It's gonna be amazing. High hopes, high hopes. Honestly, I am so excited for this reading month. I think I've picked some really good books for March. I think I've been quite good for March actually at picking what I hope are fast paced books and shorter books because I think I'm gonna need that with the amount of socialising that's gonna get done in March. Um, I don't know how fast I'm gonna get through my reading. So hopefully because I've chosen, I mean there are a few serious ones in there but there are some fun ones as well. Please let me know if you've got any good books that you're planning to read in March. I am always, always, always up for recommendations. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I got a few new subscribers over the weekend just past, so hi and thank you for subscribing to me. That means so much and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope you all have an amazing upcoming week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!